Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs. Today's video is going to walk you through how to install Proxmox on a Hetzner node. So, what is Hetzner? Right? Hetzner is a German based hosting company and they sell a mix of services, right? They sell dedicated instances, which are basically like virtual machines that they manage and host in their own data centers. They also sell physical hosts that includes like full rack servers. But what I feel like they sell that makes them the most convenient for our home lab use case, right? Or for our small time, you know, blog or small time IT guy use case is their dedicated root servers and for about 40 to 45 dollars a month right depending on you know the server you choose and how you configure it you can get a server that has six cores 12 threads 64 gigs of storage and one terabyte of nvme storage or two terabytes of hard drive storage or a mix of whatever kind of storage you want that you're willing to pay for right so it's a pretty powerful server that comes with a dedicated ip address and that's managed off-site from you and i feel like that's very useful because you can install websites run blogs run different services out of that server and i'm gonna, and I'm gonna show you how i set up proxmox to do those things for me right so let's go ahead and let's get started guys okay so I thought it might help for me to walk through a brief summary of this entire install process, just to kind of make things easier for the both of us. All right. So um, first we start with the Proxmox node. We're going to go ahead and boot this node into recovery mode from recovery mode. We're going to install or, you know, set up a Proxmox VM, install Proxmox. We're then going to reboot that Proxmox VM. From that Proxmox VM, we're gonna configure Proxmox. After that, we're actually gonna reboot the physical Proxmox host. And then we're done. We just have to set up some basic security stuff. And then in the video after this, I'll walk you through how to properly lock down this server. But yeah, straightforward. Okay. So this is how you set up Hetzner. The very first thing you wanna do is purchase your Hetzner instance. So type in that's no go ahead and click dedicated server hosting right go ahead and select your server click order and fill out the details order your server no okay so scroll through here select the server you want as you can see a lot of these come with Ryzen 5 3600s you get six core 12 threads right 64 gigs of rams and a 512 gigabyte ssd or 2x2 terabyte you know hard drives depending on how you want to configure things right in my case i went to the ssds after that you'll go ahead and you'll click login and you'll go to robot after you get to accounts.hertzner.com slash login you'll go ahead and log in and then you'll go to server and you'll select your server. You'll click your server, click NVMe, rescue. You'll then activate the rescue system. When it activates the rescue system, it's gonna give you this password. Note this password down somewhere. I'm just gonna paste it up here because you're gonna need it later, right? After that, we then click reset. And what you want to do is execute a hardware reset of the server and click send. You'll know the hardware reset has been executed because you'll get an email, right? You know, after you sign up for Hertz, now you have to register your email address. And when you get your email, uh, it'll notify you that the host has been physically reset. Okay. So I'm using Bitvice SSH client. You could use any other SSH client you want. This is just the one I prefer. The username you're gonna to use to connect to your Proxmox instance is gonna be root. The host is gonna be whatever IP address of your Proxmox host there is. So for instance, you could go here, go to IPs, and then you can see your IP right here. Right, while you're here, you also wanna notate some information like the gateway and the net mask. 
right? So, see right here. So this info you'll want to notate and keep it down for later. So after you get your Proxmox IP address, you'll then connect to the host. It's going to ask if you want to uh, connect to the host, right? It's giving me a key warning, basically saying the keys changed since the last time it's connected. That's fine because I wiped the server. So click accept and save. Then it's going to ask for the password. And this is where we get the password for this. So we go back to rescue. Oh. Dang, the password disappeared. Luckily, we notated it. So let's grab that password. Let's come to rescue. And let's connect. All right, perfect. So let us connect successfully. All right, if you connect successfully, you should see this screen. Okay, so after you finish connecting, you'll see this screen. What exactly is it? This screen is Hertzner's rescue mode. So what exactly is this screen? This is Hetzner's rescue Linux distro, right? Basically it's a slimmed down distro that gives us a Linux shell and access to the physical hardware. And we're gonna use this Linux shell to install Proxmox. The very first step that we're gonna do is to actually download the Proxmox ISO install. So let's get started with that. In order for us to download Proxmox to the Hetzner host, we first have to enter this command here and I'll break this command down for you. So the very first thing we have is wget, right? So this is the web get that basically says download. This is dash O, this is a flag that says, change the name of the file as you download it. This is the name we're choosing. And then between two quotes, you just enter the link to Proxmox, right? And I can show you where I'm getting this link, All right? I just went to the Proxmox download website and I was able to find, you know, the actual HTML link for the Proxmox ISOs. So I just right click copied and then pasted it inside of the window. So here, All right? So for me to find that link, I just went to the Proxmox website, dug around, and I was able to find the index of ISOs. And I just right clicked the one I wanted and pasted that inside of my SSH session between these two brackets right there. And after that, you go ahead and you hit, hit enter and you wait for the ISO to download. But wait, there's more boys. There's always more. So, our Proxmox ISO is downloaded. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna boot up a virtual machine and I'm gonna show you what I mean. Okay, so now it's time to boot the Proxmox ISO in a VM. We're gonna use this command. I'm gonna break it down to you as quickly as I can. All right. So, Boot, basically this portion says boot a VM with four gigs of RAM. This section says pass through a CD drive named pv.iso and then pass through drives. Well, it then passes through two different drives, right? Dev slash NVMe ON1 and NVMe ON2. Those are the two drives we bought, right? After that, it also spins up the VM and passes through the VM's console interface to VNC0. Right, and that's it. You won't see anything happening. You'll actually just see this blank blinking screen, but that means the command ran successfully. Right, and then from here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get um, Proxmox installed. Okay, so after we enter that command, we're then gonna have to enter a VNC session, right? Um, I use our VNC connect on Windows. If you're using Linux, you can probably use one of the built-in VNC tools or like VNC over SSH. There's a bunch of different options, right? This is just the one I prefer to use. So you enter your server's IP address, right? I've already entered mine's down here so you can see the window, right? So I just double clicked it. After that, you'll see a window like 
this. After that, you'll get a prompt asking your permission to connect. You'll go ahead and click continue in the VNC viewer session. Okay, cool. So once VNC is done booting up, you'll see this screen, right? And we'll just go ahead and we'll walk through the Proxmox install. We'll click install graphical interface. I'm just gonna wait a few moments for it to finish up here. A few moments later. Hey, there we go. All right, perfect. So we just scroll through the agreement. All right, we hit, I agree. Now this is the important part where we configure our storage options. My suggestion is going to be, well, it depends. If you want performance and you do not care about your data, CFS rate zero. If you do care about your data, CFS rate one. I would not suggest using BTRFS. I've used it before and <laughs> I lost data. So I don't necessarily trust it. That doesn't mean other people don't use it, right? Um, I just don't trust it. So ZFS RAID zero, in my case, I don't care about the storage. I have backups. I have a pretty good backup strategy. I don't mind losing this. And worst case scenario, I hit up Hertzner support. They replace with them on drives. I do this process again, restore for my backups, right? Or upload my backups to the host restore them and I'm back up probably within a day or two. It's not too bad. So here's what we do. Having some mouse issues here. So we could hit okay. Hit next. We enter our country. Enter our time zone. Wait next, we enter our password for the Proxmox host, right? And then we enter our password. Then we hit next and then PV. Okay, so this is where we're gonna take a little bit of a departure here. Okay, cool. So we head back to Chrome real quick. We go back to Hertzner, go back to our IPs, and then we get this IP right here. Then we get our IP info. The two pieces of information you want are the gateway and the net mask. So the net mask ends in dot one nine two and the gateway ends in dot one two nine. So we just enter that. So this is, oops. okay. So we have the VNC session open back up again. And we'll just enter that information we got from that website. We'll go from there. So, and then, right. So IP address is one, three, four.
Okay, cool. So we've entered our cider mask, we've entered our gateway, we've entered our network info, right? We've configured our storage and we've set our time zone, key maps, and country. So the next thing we do is we hit install and we just let this install, right? And we're done, boys. Getting Proxmox installed, we are on step four of seven. We're almost done. Okay, so now that the Proxmox installer has rebooted, we then go back to our SSH session. We hit Control C to end that command and close the VNC session. We're going to use this command again, except we're going to make some changes. We're going to delete a couple sections, and the section that we're going to delete is this D dash CD ROM. So basically, we're removing the option that forces it to boot as a CD ROM, right? The dash K option is for keyboard, so we set the keyboard English. We hit DNC. Okay, so what we then do is reboot back into that session. Okay, and we are back. So after Proxmox is done reinstalling, we then go back to our SSH session, All right? The very first thing you wanna do is enter IP address and we'll wanna get some information. So the very first thing you want to do is get your ENP3 at zero. That's your interface name. We'll need this once we boot back into Proxmox to configure our interface. So go ahead and notate that somewhere. I'm going to paste this to notepad off screen. Then after we get our interface, we then get our IP address and net mask. All right. And we also need notate that off screen. I should have gotten this early in the video, but I'm including this step as well, just in case. After that, we then issue our reboot, All right? So here's how we reboot. We go up, All right? And when you go up, you'll notice there's a difference in this command, All right? So let's go back some. So this command right here sh show, shows this dash boot d dash cd rom dot pv dot iso basically that says when you're booting the proxmox vm boot from this iso file right we're gonna delete that portion right here right and then we're gonna go ahead and issue our boot after we issue our boot our virtual machine should start back up but this time it's gonna use the two hard drives to boot up rather than our ISO. So they're booting up. We go ahead and we zoom in and we let this boot. So as you can see, we're back at our login environment and it's giving us our IP address. All right. Um, looks like we already probably can figure that during the install. So we're fortunate there. But unfortunately, this host still doesn't quite have internet access yet. So what we're gonna do is we are going to give ourselves internet access. So let's continue. First things first, we go ahead and we log back in. In this case, our username is root. Our password is the password we set earlier. All right, cool. And we're logged in. After that, we're gonna wanna change our network and file, our network file. So nano slash Etsy network interfaces. And you'll notice that this interface right here is called ENS30. We're simply going to change it to the interface name that we copied before we rebooted this machine. So in my case, it's ENP35SO. So ENP 35 SO and then we save and we reload. All 
So now that that's configured, all we have to do is reboot the host. So again, we just shut this down. Okay. So we force this virtual machine to shut down and we open up our SSH session again. Right. So after that, we simply reboot, right? When you initiate this reboot, it's going to go ahead and kick you out of the recovery mode and start to boot that host back up. So what I like to do is just kick off a quick little ping there. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Okay, cool. So our host is back up and we can verify this inside of Herzner, right? Or not inside of Herzner, but we can verify this in our web browser. So if everything worked right, when we open up our web browser and we go to the IP address of our Proxmox host and type in port 8006 right there and type in HTTPS. We should be presented with a login menu on the actual public IP of our Proxmox host. Very nice. Good success, right? So I know what you're thinking. Okay, cool. Now I can start using this host. I do not suggest you actually use this Proxmox host on the web unsecured like this, right? You're asking for someone to gain access to your VMs. So before we wrap up this video, I'm going to show you what you need to do to lock down this Proxmox host as quickly as possible. So the first thing you want to do is log in with your username and password. Like I did just a couple seconds ago, click updates repository, and then you want to remove the PVE. Well, not even remove, just disable. Let's see the enterprise repository, then reload. Then you want to click add. And then you want to add the non subscription repository and then reload. All right. After that, you then come back here to the shell and you're going to want to issue some quick updates and get install dash Y. Oh, update dash Y and then That's why I get this upgrade. Right. Okay. Ah, right. So, according to that error, we still have an enterprise file somewhere. So, what I like to do is D, Ceph. All right. Now we should be able to update. No. Oh. Let's go back to repositories. PV, no subscription. Disable. Okay, I see what happened. Now we should be able to go back to shell. And there we go. Now it's running all the updates. And again, there's still a couple more things we have to do to lock this host down just to have some basic absolute minimum security. All right. Or at least what I would consider basic security for this situation. Okay, perfect. All right. So now everything is up to date. There's still more work to be done, boys. So First thing we want to do, right, fail to ban. All right, so we're installing fail to ban to lock out the SSH interface as well as the Proxmox web interface. All right, fail to ban's default SSH rule should be good enough to keep this host secured. All right. And by using enable, we basically started up the fail to ban script.
So the next thing you want to do is Google search fail to ban Proxmox right here. And this should be the first result. And then it tells you what files you need to create in order to have this fail to ban configuration. The first thing you need is a fail to ban jail.local file. This defines what fail to ban to look at when checking out, you know, what requests to ban the IP address from. So first we copy this file, we come back to our Proxmox host, we touch the file, we then edit the file. After we edit the file, we paste the contents from the wiki in there. And this basically defines the Proxmox jail file, right? Then after we're done, we create a filter. So this is what it should look for in our log messages or in the daemon log to verify that request was made. So again, we touch. And then nano. All right, perfect. Paste. Now we save. Fail to ban. Okay. Yeah. And then we restart fail to ban to apply those changes. So what should happen is the next time someone tries to log into the web interface. So I can test that by opening another incognito tab. Let's see if it caches this stuff or I have to log back in. Oh, it cached it. Okay. So basically what that just did was lock down to web interface, right? And the web interface is gonna basically after let's check these rules out. So after three attempts to log into the web interface and you fail, you have a one hour ban time, right? And to verify this is basically just looking at the authentication logs, the PVE authentication logs, and it's looking for this message right here, authentication failure. And then it blocks the IP and then it gives you like some messages you can configure. All right, so just some CTL restart fail ban. All right, so we are back here. All right, and I will consider the host ready to go. All right, the next thing you can do is, of course, I personally am a fan of turning on two factor authentication. Let's see here. Oh, it's got web off and. Ah, okay, let's see what's going on. So basically, this is time based two factor authentication, right? And I'm, of course, going to blur this out so you can't get my auth key. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. And then what we do is we then open up a 2FA app, we add an account. Right, uh, right, and we type in. So here's what you do open up a 2FA app, copy this code, give your code a description, your account, keep things descriptive, and it's going to ask for your verification code. I'm going to go ahead and enter that right now. Right, and so from now on, when someone wants to log into the root account, they're going to need a 2FA code. Right. And then what you can also do is, of course, make sure you have a really secure password. So I went from a default setup configuration password right here to a secure, completely set up password right here. And there you go. That is how you install Proxmox on your Herzner node. Right. And how you also lock it down to keep it from being, you know, pillaged and used for nefarious purposes. 
what we're gonna do from here is finish this up right okay so what we're gonna do now is uh, actually lock this host down get some VM set up and I'm gonna show you how I use this Hertzner host for me to host my websites right of course you're gonna need a couple of things but we'll get into the details of that later okay